caution Bahamians that there are many, many charlatans, snake oil salesmen out there. Every dollar that we put into a young person will have a return on investment mm -hmm. that's greater than what we can ever imagine. Um, if I'm going to get some funding or some support from you, how soon would I know? Dredging in Bimini begins again. The Supreme Court has lifted the Privy Council's injunction. The country's biggest hotel voices concerns over the country's crime rate. Three arraigned in the magistrate's court on fraud charges. Plus, Cartoon Network once again teams up with Atlantis for a fun-filled obstacle course. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and MB12 starts now. Tonight, a Supreme Court judge set aside a Privy Council injunction today, thereby allowing a controversial dredging project that is part of Resorts World Bimini's major resort development on Bimini to proceed. The Privy Council in London granted the injunction just over a week ago, stopping the project. Paige McCartney has the details. The injunction was granted until such time as the Malaysian conglomerate Genting Group-owned Resorts World Bimini was able to prove to the Bahamian courts that it can rely legally upon the permit it has for the dredging. The resort said last week it had all the necessary permits in hand. Lawyer for the Bimini Blue Coalition, Fred Smith, told MB12 that the group is stunned by the decision of the Supreme Court and is fearful that dredging will start again immediately. Bimini Blue Coalition, which brought the action, is a local group concerned about the impact of the dredging on the sensitive marine environment surrounding the dredge site. Smith said the group is moving quickly to get before the Court of Appeal, which is set to hear the matter on Monday afternoon. In the meantime, he said he's attempting to get the Supreme Court to issue a conservatory stay order so that the destruction by dredging does not occur until there's a chance to have their appeal heard. According to Smith, the judge also ordered that the coalition pay all of the costs of the government and the developers, both in the Privy Council and in the Supreme Court in these last hearings. Resorts World said it's pleased with the ruling and it will resume dredging work immediately, which also means that many Biminites will immediately return to work. Resorts World Bahamas has maintained that it is operating in accordance with the law and is committed to protecting the environment. It is carrying out the dredging work in the waters off Bimini as a part of its plan to construct a 1,000-foot ferry pair and man-made island that will allow its cruise ship to bring day trippers from Miami to its resort on the island to dock. The company, which is building a 350-room hotel on Bimini, scheduled to open later this year, claims the project will bring an economic boost to the island of just 1,600 people. Smith said the coalition was awaiting a written ruling detailing Justice Hartman Longley's reasons for lifting the injunction. When it approved the injunction last week, the Privy Council said it disagreed with an earlier ruling by the Court of Appeal, which denied an application for an injunction of the work being done by the developers. Reporting for MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. A man and a woman appeared before Magistrate Carolyn Vaught Evans where they pleaded not guilty to an array of fraud charges. According to court documents, the duo allegedly obtained with intent to defraud thousands of dollars in cash and goods from different stores around New Providence. Another woman also appeared in court and pleaded not guilty to conspiracy to commit fraud and not guilty to abetment. 34-year-old Kenyon Williams of Blue Hill Road South and 32-year-old Monique Bethel of Gun Hill Road were charged with seven counts of fraud by false pretenses and one count of attempted fraud. It is alleged the pair, being concerned together and with intent to defraud, obtained $5,795 cash from Lightborn Marine, $3,000 from Nassau Blocks, and $2,500 from Premier Importers by means of false pretenses. They were also accused of attempting to obtain an additional $6,500 from Premier Importers. The crimes are alleged to have taken place between April 29th and May 6th. 
It is also alleged the pair obtained, by means of false pretenses, $974.20 worth of goods from Thompson Trading Company, $1,559.28 worth of goods from Island Wholesale Limited, $1,402.50 worth of goods from Caribbean Bottling Company, and $2,698.54 worth of goods from Bahamas Wholesale agency. These crimes are alleged to have taken place between March 7th and March 17th. Williams was further charged with another count of fraud by false pretenses. It is alleged he, with intent to defraud, obtained $100,000 cash from Christine Roll, and 25-year-old Chavez Bain of Pinewood was charged with abetment to that crime. Both Williams and Bain were charged with conspiracy to commit fraud by false pretenses. The crimes are alleged to have taken place between December 2, 2013 and January 8, 2014. Williams was also charged with one count of forgery, alleged to have taken place between October 31st and November 1st, 2011. It is alleged that he, with intent to defraud, forged a Commonwealth of the Bahamas indenture of conveyance from Christine Roll to himself, purporting the same to be genuine. Williams, Bethel, and Bain pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Bain, who is pregnant, was granted $10,000 bail and must report to the South Beach Police Station on the last Sunday of every month. She was also outfitted with an electronic monitoring device. Bethel was granted bail in the amount of $13,000 total and must report to the Fox Hill Police Station on the last Sunday of each month. She was also outfitted with an electronic monitoring device. As for Williams, police prosecutor Corporal Claudette McKenzie argued Williams should not be granted bail. She said Williams has outstanding warrants as well as matters before other courts of a similar nature, and she believes he is likely to reoffend. Williams was subsequently denied bail and remanded to Her Majesty's prison. Williams, Bethel, and Bain will return to court on July 25th for trial. Amid growing concern over the level of violent crime in the Bahamas, President and Managing Director of Atlantis, Paradise Island, George Marcantonis, admits he's had to reassure the resort's lenders who have voiced concerns over several crime warnings, rising reports of assault and their potential impact on Atlantis. According to the Bahamas 2014 Crime and Safety Report from the U.S. State Department, the U.S. Embassy received an increase in reports of assaults, including sexual assaults, at residences, hotel rooms, casinos, outside hotels, and on cruise ships. As Brookfield Hospitality moves to refinance Atlantis' multi-million dollar debt, Mark Antonis says lenders have raised questions about what's being done to tackle the country's crime problem. Crime has definitely come up. Oh, yes, it has. Questions are, how does the crime impact tourism? And subsequently then, how does it impact, or how could it impact Atlantis in the future? How, what are these warnings that they've read, sometimes are issued to cruise ship passengers? What kind of impact could those have to people coming off a ship and visiting our, you know, our locations. However, he told NB12 he has assured lenders that crime happens in the Bahamas just like anywhere else in the world. Obviously, subjects like uh, how crime has been tackled come up. The lenders ask us. They read the same newspapers we read. They have the same Google alerts we have. So, you know, these are things that we we talk about it. These are things that we... To ensure the safety of its visitors and guests, Mark Antonis says Atlantis has a security team of over 400 people, around 32 K-9 patrol units, as well as a bomb and drug-sniffing dogs. We spend our time, I talk to them and I reassure them about the efforts that we make to make sure that all of our guests and our employees alike are safe. Crime happens in every country in the world. It just does. But it's really, it really gets a lot of publicity here because we're a smaller nation. And, you know, we have to just 
keep doing our best. Well, each year, Atlantis Paradise Island's Aqua Adventure entertains a whopping 2.7 million tourists, earning its place as one of the largest water parks in the world. This summer, the mega resort teamed up with Cartoon Network once again for an epic Adventure Time inflatable obstacle course, allowing visitors to jump, slide, and glide their way across Paradise Lagoon. Our Vonique 2 tried out the thrilling adventure and filed this report. Where else can you find a 9,000 square foot Adventure Time obstacle course? It's got swings, slides featuring all of your favorite characters from Cartoon Network's hit TV series, Adventure Time. It's the hottest new attraction here at Atlantis Paradise Island this summer, and it's great for kids of all ages, including me. So who's ready for some water? <laughs> Cartoon Network is back in the Bahamas this summer and has taken over Paradise Lagoon, creating new and exhilarating adventures like this inflatable obstacle course. You absolutely have to come down to Atlantis. This is a one-of-a-kind, amazing 9,000 square foot Adventure Time uh, obstacle course. Not only do we have that, we have screen on the green, we have character parades in the Marina Village. Whatever you want to do, if you love Cartoon Network, if you're a kid, if you're a parent, you've got to come to Atlantis. The epic water adventure features a 16-foot Finn and Jake, 50-foot long double lady rainicorn slide, 10-foot ice kingdom and candy kingdom towers, 13-foot BMO launch pad, and 25-foot princess bubblegum and ice king swings. Uh, we've made some modifications to the to the uh, the big obstacle course to make it a little bit more fun and a lot easier to get in and on, on and off of. Visitors lined up to slide, swing, and jump their way across Aflex Technologies' impressive course, officially kicking off 90 days of summer fun at the Atlantis. How was the Adventure Time obstacle course? A lot of fun. That's, that's, a, that's hard fun, work. but tough. The, the obstacle course is it's not as tough as marriage. <laughs> but, but but it was doable. <laughs> what is your strategy to ensure you don't fall into the water? Because it stay looks kind of scary. Stay low, low, low. I was on my stomach the whole time. Me too. <laughs> um, there's a catapult on the other end of it, and I got like catapulted into the air. I think I lacked the blob where I jumped and launched my daughter into the air. That was a pretty good time. So is there a strategy? I'm a newcomer. I can't swim. So what do you, what advice do you have for me? Wear a life jacket. Take your time because it's very slippery. And with a new year came a new beach slide. Lumpy Space Racer. We have lots of new activities throughout the resort, and it's the longest time we've had them on property uh, since the relationship began. Well, they'll be here for a full 90 days this summer. So I'm ready to go. I have TJ with me. I can't swim, so my trusty personal lifeguard, LeVar, is with me, and we're ready to hit the obstacle course. Ready, guys? Let's go. Wish me luck. Hope I come back alive. Bye. Big mistake. It took everyone else 20 minutes to complete the obstacle course. How long did it take me? 40 minutes. After my cameraman TJ ditches me, my strategy is to just sit there and do nothing. After about 30 minutes, I somehow managed to make it to the Ice Kingdom. And here comes my happy dance. Oh, I am exhausted. <laughs> oh my god. I am alive. <laughs> Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonik Toot. When MB12 returns, the DNA and the Contractors Association weigh in on the budget. Stay with us.